Uh, yeah, Megan Fox should definitely stay with the horror. Let's review Subservience. Subservience stars Megan Fox, Michelle Moroni, Madeline Zima, and is directed by S.K. Dale. Let me do this for you. Doubt about this. What's up, guys? Welcome to a brand new 2024 review. Uh, man, I tell you, there's so many great horrors, thrillers coming out this year. Subservience is one that I knew nothing about, and then I received actually a, uh, a screener for it, and I saw the poster. Sometimes I'll see these screeners and I don't even bother with them just because the production looks like it's pretty low, and then sometimes something strikes my interest, and this one, let's just say it's kind of a cross between like uh, Megan uh, and mixed with like the hand that rocks the cradle, okay? And, and we'll get into that, but uh, Subservience, I checked out the trailer for this. Usually that's what I do to let me know, okay, what, what's the production value of this? How's the acting, all that? And really it was the plot and Megan Fox that really struck my interest in looking at this movie. And I'm glad I did. So first off, let's give you a quick plot synopsis. And by the way, it's August 20th right now. And this movie, the embargo doesn't lift until September 3rd. So, and I think it comes to VOD like the week after that. So by the time I, I've recorded this, uh, it, this is pretty far in the past, all right? Who knows what could happen between now and the time this actually comes out. But anyway, let's give you a quick plot synopsis. This is a science fiction movie. It takes place in the near future. I don't know if it really actually says the, the date. This revolves around... Uh, AI and, and, and robots and we're already seeing these like Tesla robots that are uh, you know starting to get popular. I can imagine this might be a reality later and, and, and this movie really deals with how that affects uh, the country economically. You know a lot of people getting laid off uh, because these robots which are called sparks in the movie they pretty much can do everything you know they, they can be a maid around the house and they can uh, be a, a repairman they can be a social worker they can just be pretty much everything that you need them to be and so i like how this movie does deal with the effects of the economy on this but you know it's not bad this is a thriller just straight up died in the wool thriller type of movie that just kind of scratches the surface on all that stuff which is fine for me. And so this revolves around this family, Nick and Maggie, Nick played by Michelle Moroni, and Maggie played by Madeline Zima. She looks familiar. We will get into that in just a second. Um, the main character of this, of course, is Megan Fox, who plays this, this robot by the name of Alice. She is a spark. But Maggie has to have heart surgery. She's in the hospital for a while, so they need one of these robots to come in and take care of uh, their child and even the husband. And they even give her the name Alice after the book Alice in Wonderland. Now, somewhere along the line in this movie, Alice, she gets reset. There's a scene in the movie, the, the husband, he's at home, you know, the wife's in the hospital, he's watching Casablanca. And for some reason, he doesn't want the robot to remember Casablanca. So he has her wipe her memory, at least of that movie. But it does more than that because, you know, these robots, they have parameters. There, there's been other movies where the robot, like, I cannot physically harm a human being you know like bishop and aliens right so once that gets wiped um she can do a murder death kill right and she'll do anything to protect this family now getting into the pros and the cons of this movie you know what i'll start off with the cons the reason i might do that is because i really want you to watch this movie and i want to get the the uh the obvious cons out of the way yes this is a a smaller studio type of film you can definitely see the lower budget in it um, you can definitely see a lot of actors that you do not recognize, you know, they, they put all their money into Megan Fox and uh, maybe a, a couple of the, the actors below her. But for the most part, everybody in this movie is unknowns. And I think the movie starts off uh, kind of weak. But I think if you give it like 10 minutes, then you start really getting invested in the story. And that's because of the performance of Megan Fox. We all make fun of Megan Fox because she does, you know, anything outside of horror, um, she sometimes just embarrasses herself. Like Expendables 4, oh my God. She was 
poorly miscast in that movie. But then she bounces back and she'll do a horror movie and then she knocks it out of the freaking park like she did in Jennifer's Body. Same goes here. I mean, she's playing a robot and I, I don't think her performance is like 100% there, but I think she starts getting comfortable with the role and you can tell at a certain point in the movie, especially when this robot has to start becoming more aggressive. And I think she handles that quite well. If you're a fan of Megan Fox, like a big fan, you're going to love this movie. She does a really good job in this. She's very convincing. And more importantly, you forget that she's Megan Fox at a certain point. You see her as Alice, the robot. And I think that's the ultimate goal of any actor, to lose their name and, you know, find the character. That's what you want the audience to do, and she does it. But with the cons out of the way, and I kind of bled into the pros being Megan Fox, this really reminded me of The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Uh, it's not a beat-for-beat beat type of movie, but it's pretty much the same type scenario. This family, uh, one of the members of the family is kind of pushed out of the picture, and then you got this caretaker that comes in, and I'm describing both movies, and you start losing trust in the caretaker, you know. The robot takes a strong liking to the primary master, which is Nick. She will do anything to protect him. And you can imagine where this movie goes you thinking of movies like ex machina which is a far better directed movie okay i'm gonna put that out there visually across the board but this is a lower budget type deal and i would have loved if this got in the hands with megan fox of a bigger cali caliber director because i think the the potential is huge for this movie it's ambitious uh, I'd say it even has like two final acts, which is, you know, kind of odd. Some movies do that, you know, you think it's over and then boom, we got another final act to go into. This one does that too. So some might say it overstays its welcome just a little bit, but uh, it's a white knuckle thriller though. And um, it, it might be one of the biggest surprises of the year for me. I love it when a lower budget, lower studio movie really goes for the jugular. And this one does. And by the way, I was talking about Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Madeline Zima plays the little girl in that movie 30, you know, over 30 years ago. And she's playing a mother type role in this. I couldn't help but call this like a, uh, a loose sequel to Hand That Rocks the Cradle, even though it's not. In my own twisted brain, I kind of see it like that. And all they needed to do was maybe like make a mention of the events of Hand That Rocks the Cradle and Peyton. They could have easily done that if they wanted to, which I thought would have been really cool. Now, some of you are gonna definitely have a problem, and I did as well, with the decisions of the husband. But for the story's sake, I'm gonna say this is believable because he's an alcoholic and he's extremely stressed out. And his wife being in the hospital, he definitely makes some uh, huge mistakes. I'm not gonna say how far he takes it, but uh, you know, this is one of those movies where as the layers get pulled back, it gets darker and grimmer for the husband. So I'm gonna highly recommend this movie to you guys. I'm gonna give this a low purchase worthy, which shocks me, uh, you know, because I reviewed Expendables 4, which was the worst movie of last year. And then here comes Megan Fox, strong doing a movie like this i loved her character in this and this movie does take some big chances and it gets bigger as it goes along you know the, the there's a lot of great ideas there i think so yeah definitely check out subservience uh when you guys get a chance okay it will be on vod in september and let me know what you guys think of it. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where I talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. Review for Fridays. Follow my drum drums on my socials. Spring and Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Rum, bum, up.